Hey, it's Chris here from Bobber Trout Fitters. Today we're gonna tie the D-Rib Stonefly. And I like to use a Daiichi 1730 hook because as you can see, it just has a little bit of a bend in the shank, gives it a more lifelike appearance. I've already tied on my thread and I've tied on some 0 0.20 uh, lead wire. Now I'm wrapping it to create a thicker body and then just down towards the, uh, the point of the hook. I don't want it to go all the way down because the D-Rib Stonefly is actually supposed to have quite a thin body profile. I can use my thread, I'm just gonna lock that lead in, but right around the body where the D-Rib is going to go over, I really want to make sure I cover most of that up with thread because D-Rib's translucent, you're going to see that thread through the rib. Now it's time for the tail. I'm just using golden goose biots here. You could set them out and oppose them on the sides of the hook if you want, but I like to just do a V right on the top of the hook. Hens body glass half round or D-Rib, they both work, but don't tie them on the top of the hook like you might be inclined to. Tie them on the side, that way you don't mess up the taper of the body. I'm gonna tie it in securely, wrap up to where I'm gonna finish, and now I'm gonna get that D-Rib secured. But before I do that, we've got one creative step. It's time to break out the Sharpie markers because the cool thing about this translucent D-Rib is that anything that we paint on the thread or the body of the fly is gonna show through. I've got golden thread, but I'm gonna use a brown Sharpie here, and I'm just gonna you know, put in a rough coloring on the body, but the fish will see that and it's gonna show through the D-Rib. You could do circles, you could do patterns, you could do shapes, you have a lot of creative options here. And this works not only for stone flies, but any nymph pattern that you're gonna tie with D-Rib. Now that I've got my brown painted on top, I'm gonna to put a half hitch in the thread just so it doesn't unravel because it's time to now do our rotary vise function and wrap this D-Rib all the way up to where the thread is. Again, we want nice, simple, concentric wraps of the D-Rib. Uh, you know, just try to keep it nice and tight. And as we wrap it up, you'll already start to see that brown is gonna show through and give it a really nice buggy appearance. D-Rib gives it a good segmented insect-like feel and that just adds to the realism of this fly. Now we're gonna tie in our scud back. This is 1 8 inch scud back here. I'm using an amber color because it matches the golden pattern of this fly, but feel free to use olive or brown or whatever color you want for the fly that you're tying. Now we're gonna use dubbing to build up a ball. I am just gonna noodle this on with my fingers. That's where you just roughly wrap the dubbing around the thread, but you could certainly make a dubbing loop. We do want it to be a pretty chunky body and we can tease out some of these fibers with a toothbrush or a bodkin when we're done the fly. So here I'm making that nice chunky ball. So we got our scud back ready to go. Now it's time for the legs. I've cut out a V notch and this is partridge feather that I'm using. It's actually shorter and finer than mallard flank. I think it works better here. I'm tying in the whole feather. I'm gonna clip off the end there and I'm securing it so that that V notch goes down back towards the fly. It's gonna make these legs splay out. Clip that off and when I wrap the scud back, over the top of the fly to create that shell back. It's also gonna hold down, flatten, and separate those partridge feathers and give us a nice buggy leg appearance. So now we're gonna tie that down nice and secure. And now very simply, we're basically gonna repeat that exact same procedure. I'm gonna noodle on another ball of dubbing. We're gonna wrap that over the body. I'm folding back the scud back here and locking it down just so that again, we can wrap it over and make a natural kind of finish. More dubbing here to create the, uh, the second segment of this fly. And again, nice and chunky, we're gonna wrap that in there. And then what we're gonna do is simply repeat what we did with the partridge feather. We're gonna cut another V-notch out of it, uh, get it all set up, just making sure that we have a nice chunky body. Get that locked in. I generally want the legs in the front of the fly to be a little bit longer than the legs in the back. So select a partridge feather with longer feathers for that purpose. I'm gonna put a last tiny bit of dubbing just to cover up that scud back and clean up the look of this fly. But it's a nice, simple fly to tie. It's very effective. Stoneflies are in the water all year round. Don't feel like you have to fish these at a certain season. They work any time that you throw them in. It's got nice weight, it's got a nice look, and it definitely catches fish. There you have it, the D-Rib Stonefly. Nice, easy, and quick to tie. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. Please check out the rest of our fly tying videos on our YouTube channel. We have lots of patterns now. We've really accumulated a lot over the winter time. Let us know any comments below or if you have any questions, but otherwise, thanks so much for watching. There you have the D-Rib Stonefly pattern.